okay, so Dave and I are done. You know, we stop paying tithing. We stop wearing our garments. We stop attending. And, um, yeah, about a year later, my daughter's engaged. And she's been at BYU. She, she left for BYU-Idaho right about the time that I stopped wearing garments. She went to Rick's, too. Yeah. And it was <laughs> like actually... like daughter. <laughs> it was really traumatic in a way to drop her off, having lost my faith and being like, there are temples, pictures of the temple in every room and feeling that the temple is a tool of control by that point. I was like, this is gross. <laughs> like, they're just trying, you know, if they can get people to the temple, they get them to pay tithing, they get them to do all the things, you know? So if, if you hold the temple over their heads, they have to go over, through these hoops that benefit the church in order to make it to the temple. But um, she went and they just do their job there. You know, there's so much peer pressure and, and she, I, she could, I could tell she got deeper into the church there than she had been the last few years because we'd been pretty like, I don't know, this, you know, I'd, I'd been in several years of decline and feeling like the church was good, but you know, it got to her. She met a wonderful guy and he was a return missionary. He'd been friends with one of her friends and she just fell in love with this fun, wonderful guy. And you know, he's a Mormon and he's getting married and they're getting married. And by then she's more she's into it more and you know she's like well we're getting married and I I was like well I assume it's going to be in the temple and she's like yeah and I was like okay and I can't I can't even tell you how hard it was to first of all knowing that I weddings could be so beautiful you know I've been to so many beautiful weddings and to be like, you're going to go do this wedding where I can't be there, where your dad can't be there, where none of your siblings can be there. And I know this is kind of the price of admission for getting this guy. So it wasn't that I felt like she was rejecting us. It just felt so sad that she's basically in the only church that was going to do this to us. <laughs> like any other church, you could pretty much go to a wedding. So I felt really unfortunate that we we're in the worst church for being apostates when your kids are getting married. It, it just felt so sad to be like, I've been here every day of my daughter's life. And they, why do they have this policy that if she could just even do a civil ceremony and I could watch that, I don't need to be there during the ceiling, but I want to watch my daughter get married. And it, it just ate me up that in Europe or everywhere else in the world, you could have a civil ceremony and then go get sealed. And at that point, it was still the rule that if you had a civil ceremony, you had to wait a year before you could get sealed. And it just made me so upset that that was only an issue here and it had to be a tool of control. And so I was thinking one day, I was like, I'm going to write a letter to the First Presidency and let them know how, how cruel this is to keep a mother away from her daughter on her wedding day, to, to, to make her choose between her church and her love and her parents and her family. And as I, I thought about what I would write, I realized they've been doing this for 50 years. My grandma did not get to watch my mom get married because my grandma wasn't endowed. So her only daughter, she missed her only daughter's wedding 50 years ago. And I'm going to miss my oldest daughter's wedding 50 years later. This has been happening every day for decades, and it's provided so much devastation. And there's no way the first presidency isn't aware of whatever I was going to write in this letter. They're choosing to do this. And it just seemed so horribly cruel to, to make people qualify to be there to their own child's wedding. So I wrote a letter to... Um, the bishop and the stake president. And I said, look, I feel, you know, I know the temple recommend questions. You know, I don't make any money at this point. So I could say I'm a full tithe payer. Sure, I haven't been attending church, but you guys haven't asked me why not. 
And I feel like, you know, I have a belief in divinity and that God's good with me. Um, you know, I follow, basically I follow all the rules. I'm not asking to go to her endowment. I'm asking to attend her ceremony like everyone else who's wearing just street clothes. You're not participating in the ceremony. You're just witnessing it. I was like, I am this mother, this child's mother. I grew her in my body. You know, the final question in the temple recommend interview is, do you feel worthy? And I say, I I feel worthy. I've been there for this child in every way, every day of her life. If I am the most worthy person in the world to be there. (sighs) And so I sent this letter and I was afraid to send it because I knew that if they said no, I would be, that would kind of be it for me. But I did because I was like, I have to try to be there at my daughter's wedding. And there was the option of possibly sneaking in, borrowing a recommend from someone. But at the same time, I was like, I want to respect my daughter's beliefs. I want to get in legitimately or not at all because this is her beliefs. This is her husband's beliefs. I don't want to disrespect this holy ceremony for them. So if I can get in on my own accord, I'll do whatever I can. But... I also have to be honest. I'm not going to get in and lie. So I was like, look, I think for these reasons, I'm worthy. I sent the letter and he called me a few days later and said, I I don't feel comfortable giving you a recommend. He's doing what he's told and he's feeling he's taking comfort in the fact that that he's just following orders so that he doesn't have to feel responsible for cutting me out of my daughter's wedding. But he is part of the problem now. He has cut me out of my daughter's wedding. He hasn't pushed back on the system at all. He's an agent of this system. And I was just like, he needs to know how uncomfortable this is. I'm not going to just let him sit and be comfortable that he's made the right choice here. He made the wrong choice. And so I sent a letter of resignation the day my daughter got married to the bishop I said, dear bishop, I'm not going to say their names, but dear bishop, stake president, and every single person on the leadership chain up to and including President Russell M. Nelson, I want you to feel more than the melancholy satisfaction of doing the right thing, which I assume you felt when you denied me permission to sit in the room while my daughter gets married. I'm sure you feel better when you tell yourself that I was ultimately at fault, that I could have... Avoided this whole thing by playing the game, staying active in church, paying my tithing, etc. But until you know the reasons I couldn't do that, you can't know the full story. You stay ignorant on the issues because you're comfortable in a system that benefits you. You owe the world discomfort and you are cowards doing harm if you refuse to sit in discomfort. I want you to know that I will be uncomfortable knowing someone else is helping my daughter get dressed and watching her get married. While I sit outside, she is lucky to have support, but I'm left in the cold. I have memories of her life that she doesn't. It is my job to remember and support her. And missing the opportunity to do that on her wedding day is killing me. There is no reason it has to be this way. I don't believe a loving God would do this. You need to be aware of my discomfort. This, as well as other things in the church, harms me deeply. And I hope you will challenge your comfort. This system is rotten in many ways, and for you to sit in the privileged position and judge me for whatever it is you feel I've done wrong while ignoring your part is horrific. Shame on you. I will deal with my own shame, but you need to be aware of yours too. Shame on you for upholding a system that helps so few, less than 0.01 of the population, and does harm to so many who don't fit their extremely specific mold. 
Shame on you for not ultimately knowing the full unbiased history of the organization you serve and vilifying those who do their due diligence and not making space for unbelief. Please understand, I don't think you are actually bad people. I think you're intellectually lazy and overly <laughs> comfortable, <laughs> which is irresponsible, which isn't the same as bad. These are sins of omission rather than sins of commission, but like most sins, it is flexible, fixable. Please pass my letter up the chain and please remove my name from the membership records. I'm done. Sincerely, Shannon Montez. So I sent that. It felt a little, you know, it just, it felt good to feel anger instead of sadness, which obviously I still feel sadness about. But the day of her wedding was one of the most difficult days of my life because like, as a good parent, you have to be happy. You know, it's not about me. It's not my day. It's her day. And this is what she chose. And I want to support her in every way. And her, if she wants to get married in the temple, I want that for her. It's not her fault. So I had to smile while my heart was breaking. And I... You know, it was so hard to pretend like this was such a happy day. And I was trying to find all the good, happy things. But honestly, one of the worst parts was the lack of acknowledgement that this was hard for me. The lack of sympathy. Just knowing, you know, knowing that everyone's there like, well, she knew. You chose it. You could have done it. That lack of sympathy is so cruel. Like what I needed were hugs and like support. And they were supporting Shelby, but nobody was supporting me in my like good Mormons felt just that I was deserving of this. But I had been a good mom. Nothing I could have done would mean that I deserve to miss that. Like, there's nothing that I could have done. She loved me, and I loved her, and I deserved, I created this person. I shepherded her every day of her life. There's nothing I could have done that would justify this. It's absolutely cruel and unusual punishment for something as small as losing belief. Yeah. And, yeah, three months later, they changed this policy so she could have had a civil ceremony. (laughs) (laughs) And that it just almost made it worse. No acknowledgement that 50 years, my like my mother couldn't see my pain because she knew that her mother felt my pain. And it was so hard for my mom to see me suffer that she avoided me. But I could just see that it was too painful for her. And we couldn't have this discussion. And I needed my mom. And her mom needed, like, she didn't get to see her get married. It's just to think that this devastation has happened for generations in one family. That's a lot of pain that was completely avoidable. And they were completely aware that this causes pain. And they didn't care. And the people walking past me didn't care. And so that's what I'm saying. It does bad things with good people. It, it, it undermines their ability to be empathetic because they're so concerned about being right. And it does some real harm to a lot of people when being right is more important than being loving. <laughs> 